before going to tougher negotiations in China and the Philippines later on during this trip. All right, All right. thanks very much, Kayla. Taylor, thank you. Uh, will there be any significant policy announcements during the trip? Let's bring in Stefan Selig. He's a managing partner at Bridge Park Advisors. Stefan was former Undersecretary of Commerce for International Trade. Also, Dean Chang, a senior research fellow with the Asian Studies Center at the Heritage Foundation. Stefan, let me begin, since you're right here uh, sitting in the, in the studio with us. Um, what do you think the, the major outcome of this trip will be? Well, look, this is, as Kayla just pointed out, Tyler, um, a very important trip for the president. It is his first trip to Asia. Um, and it is where uh, a large portion of the U.S. trade deficit resides, which he's been so active in talking about. And it's going to have two components. There will be a strategic and national security component, primarily focused on North Korea and, to a lesser degree, the South China Seas. And there'll be an economic and commercial component. And that economic and commercial component is going to be primarily focused on trade. My fear would be if the president and the administration continues to focus on the trade deficit, uh, not much will come from it. Why do you say that? Well, why, why is that the wrong thing to focus on? Well, because we have real issues um, with China and other countries as market it relates access. to trade. Market access, for example. Rules of the road, for example. But none of those are fundamentally going to uh, address the trade deficit, which is fundamentally caused uh, by, by the savings glut that exists in these countries as opposed to the terms of trade. So focus on the terms of trade, work with U.S. Comp companies to have more and better access to those markets uh, is the way to go. Dean, your reaction? Uh, I would tend to agree uh, with Stefan's uh, observations. I think that uh, it is going to be a uh, very strategic focus. North Korea has been making uh, very dangerous threats against Guam, against Hawaii. Um, and on the trade aspect, uh, really, it is, in particular with China, I would add the issue of intellectual property right protection. And I think the president going over there as the IP probe is still underway uh, means that he does have a potential cudgel up his sleeve if the Chinese are not forthcoming in protecting intellectual property rights better. Dean, I'm sure that North Grumman and General Dynamics are happy because they make planes and ships and they can sell them to Japan. But should we be at all worried that Japan, for the first time in 60 years, is effectively rearming? Uh, Japan has been pushed by the United States to rearm since the Cold War. Uh, President Reagan and uh, Prime Minister Yasuhiro Nakasone have built a very strong relationship uh, on the idea that Japan would expand its capabilities. Um, so long as the U.S.-Japan alliance is strong, however, I think that uh, fears of uh, growing Japanese military capability are more than a little overblown. Going back to China, though, and the trade uh, point, the timing of this is very interesting from the Chinese perspective because Xi Jinping just came off of the People's Congress where his power was basically reaffirmed, strengthened. Uh, and so how does he enter those, those talks when the U.S. wants to get fair ground for its companies? Um, you know, Melissa, it's very interesting because one of the things I think that we have a misconception about is how all-powerful the president of China uh, is. When I, I had made five separate trips to China as Undersecretary of Commerce, worked very closely with the Vice Premier Wang Yang, who had responsibility for that part of the por portfolio, who was just, by the way, elevated to the Standing Committee. And when we had companies coming in in industries like steel and aluminum, for example, talking about overcapacity in those industries, I think the central government fundamentally understood those issues and agreed with them. But they had actually limited ability to influence the provincial governments in making the hard changes, closing down big factories that employ lots of Chinese folks that had moved from the countryside that had been at the heart of reducing poverty in that country. And so I would not put too much stock into what um, President Xi could do individually quickly. Dean, do you agree with that? Because the overcapacity of steel production in China comes up here all the time. It's uh, gotten lots of complaints from steel producers in the United States that feel like their prices are pressured because of this big production glut. And we know that the reason those places stay open over in China is because they don't want to deal with the issues of, of unemployment. Could she be doing more, or is it really up to the regional governments who don't care? I think she could do a little more in the short term, and they have uh, floated the trial balloon of reducing steel exports. But in the larger main, when we look at Xi Jinping's remarks during the 19th Party Congress, he repeatedly emphasized that state-owned enterprises, state-directed uh, uh, 
state champions, state-directed priorities would take precedence. The market was really almost pushed to the side. Mm -hmm. uh, this suggests that for the next five years, we're actually going to see probably a re-centralization of economic decision-making in the hands of the government in ways that are fundamentally anti-market access. Stephen, very quickly, um, calculate the leverage between the U.S. and China. Who's got more of it and where? You know, we still do have the most powerful, important economy in the world, and China fundamentally needs uh, to be better connected to the global economies if they are going to achieve their goals. And those goals are to avoid the middle income trap where they currently are, which is going to be very difficult to do, and to continue to grow prosperity in the country. As President Xi and the party has consistently said, that is the linchpin. But aren't they to going backwards success. based on what Dean said? More state control of a big industry. I mean, I read everything that was in, and it looks to me like they are going backward, not forward. And that is exactly the issue. They certainly have gone less forward, less quickly than we had hoped than when they joined the WTO 15 years ago. And what the president and his team should be doing on this trip is to continuing to push them hard to make those changes. And what's ironic about it is those very changes are going to be required if they're going to be successful in achieving their long-term goals. And we can find low-cost manufacturing in a lot of different countries around the world. Stefan, Dean, okay. thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, don't tell Michael Kors that retail is dead. That stock's soaring on a big beat and some good news.